Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Lorna and Curtis Hewson. There we go, music. I got off everything. All right. Hey, what's kind of cool is that Lorna and Curtis, I've known Curtis, I just, I, I, Lorna, we, this is the first time we've really connected. I know of your name. Uh, I've known Curtis for a while because we connected back like in the olden days of Twitter, right? <laughs> and then we started connecting here. And you're both in Alberta, where I live, but you are literally in Edmonton. Like, <laughs> like I can, I can actually see you. I'm not even kidding. I can see you. <laughs> we'll wave. I can see that. I can see where you're located right now. And I'm a little hurt that you didn't say, like, want to come to my house, right? Well, like, you didn't want to it was an option. <laughs> Otherwise, we just came in, you know. Got a hotel room just for this purpose. Right, just to do the, <laughs> yeah, the lighting's way better in this place than our basement. I love it. I love it. Hey, so you, the, Lauren and Curtis, actually have a new book out together, and it's it's funny because it's named Collaborative Response, and you wrote it collaboratively. So there you go. Like you're yeah, living absolutely. your message already. What is the subtitle of the book? And it's linked down below for everyone that's that's interested in checking out. Yeah. So it's three foundational components to respond to the needs of uh, students. Is that the whole book? Did you just read the whole book? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the subtitle's the first chapter, yeah. really. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so like, check it out. And I, I've known I've known these two for a while, and their work is incredible. And you're going to hear some of the stuff that, you know, especially in our longer podcast, some of the stuff we're going to talk about of some of the things that they're doing with schools literally all over the world. But um, we're going to start with the three questions. And Lorna, uh, we talk first, who's going to do what? Uh, I know that you, both of you have inspired a lot of educators around the world, but when you think of a teacher who inspired you, who's someone that you think of, whether it's as a, a, a colleague or when you were a student that really inspired you and why? Um, for, for me, it was really early on in my career. I was a teacher for 20 years before I uh, went on to do some district work through curriculum and that. And um when I first started teaching, I came into an elementary school and um, there was a teacher who was on leave and she was in, actually it was why I, I had the opportunity to, to get that job. Right. Um, she was on leave because she was teaching in none of it. And, uh, and constantly through my first year while she was on leave, I would hear little bits and pieces about this teacher. And, hmm. and, uh, and then she came back to teach the next year. And then I had an opportunity to fill into a job or walk into a job that uh, another teacher was retiring. And um, we got to work side by side. And it right, was right. such a privilege because she was a person who truly had kids at heart and that she would do whatever she could to support students, regardless of what their need was. Right. And well, that's on, that sometimes meant um, even going to the secondhand store, buying shoes right. or clothes for yeah. kids who needed it. Yeah. And there's, there's so many stories like that of teachers yeah. who, you know, just will go ab above and beyond and, and really connects with people. And, uh, who, what's the name of this teacher? Linda McGratton. Linda McGratton. Yeah. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> there you go. There's a little special shout out. So that's awesome. Man. I, you know, you, you always appreciate those stories. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think teachers are, to a maybe to a fault a little too selfless in some ways right and you know we, we've, we've done a lot of talk about that on the podcast this year is that sometimes we got to take care of ourselves too because you know because we do take care of others so i really appreciate that and it's great to it's kind of neat to hear that story because sometimes those uh those don't work out that way right like the, the yeah. person that you cover for so that, that's awesome and so curtis you have been uh an administrator when we first connected you were yeah. we were both i think we were both principals at the time yeah we were uh, and different you know parts of uh alberta so when you think of an administrator who's someone that inspired you and why uh so actually my inspiration would come from my very first administrator the guy that hired me into my first classroom uh john beckert our, our we've got shout out noise for that John so that come later? <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that impressed me with John that always uh, stuck with me is how he could set up structures and you know expectations that were established for us for the kids. Um, he was not a pushover in any way with things that were happening, but then just had a kindness, a heart 
within that. And um, with those expectations, it came with, I expect you to be able to do this, but what do you need right. from me to right. be able to uh, to help? And it was that kind, caring, and then also the ability that you could go to him and say, you know, I've been thinking, John, this might be something that we could try. And you go, all right, well, let's try it. If it doesn't work, then then at least we'll know that it doesn't work. And that's really stuck with me, that whole idea of you can make mistakes, just don't make them three times. Right, you know, right. Make the mistake, learn from it, and then... Uh, how does that help us grow and learn? And even though he may not have articulated that it that way, his actions certainly did, which was, yeah, it always stuck with me. Well, I, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. When you were talking and so you're going to mention, I was going to be like, I thought you were going to say you, George, when we first connected on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, yeah, I just, I just answer. Answer. Your, your answer, your answer was actually much better and, you know, <laughs> actually accurate. So not John, shout out, double, double shout out. But there's something that I was actually just having a conversation with somebody the other day. And I, I know this about myself and sometimes I struggle with it. I can be very hard on people. And the person was struggling with it. I said, look, if, if I don't say something, it's cause I'm, I'm done. I'm done with you. Right. And I like, wow. and this is not someone I work with. This is like someone that uh, I consider a friend is that like the, the reason I'm saying, you know, sharing some of these expectations is because I have a care for you. And I think a lot of times yeah. we see that as kind of, you know, negative where it's, I actually see it as like, if I'm, if I'm offering that it's when I don't say anything, there's an issue, right? Yeah. If I, if I don't give you feedback sometimes when we're, you know, closely connected, there's a reason that's not happening. And it's like, uh, you just, you know, obviously you're not taking it, you're not interested in it and you can just figure out your own stuff. Right. So I, I love those. I, I, you know, I think a lot of times we kind of feel like um, the kindness, the relationship, it's all about that kind of fluffy, but sometimes it's the heart, right? It's the oh, hard yeah. stuff that we have high expectations. So love that story. So, well, both, and it, oh, sorry, go ahead, Curtis. I was going to say, and it came with the, you know, I, I can share that feedback, but then what do you need from me to help right. support that right. next step? Absolutely. Right. And that's important, right? Not just like you suck, right? Like not that kind of thing, right? Like <laughs> here's what I need you to do <laughs> now. And that's probably why you didn't pick me, right? So there you go, right? So hey, the last question I'm gonna float it to both of you is that when you both, you know, you're very accomplished, you've done great things, you work with educators all over the world, um, you have this new book out, but you there's a ton of learning that you've done over this time. So if you go back to your first year and talk mm -hmm. to yourselves, like what advice would you give to yourself? And Lauren, I'll start with you. Oh, for sure, count on those relationships that you build mm -hmm. in your school. So as soon as, you know, I, I think as soon as you get started, not trying to go out on your own and really reaching out to other teachers, to the, the secretaries, to the leaders in the school, knowing that you have to ask your questions because uh, otherwise just going out on your own, you're, mm -hmm. you're going to make lots of mistakes. And, and that ability to be able to create those relationships and create the scenario of collaborative collaboration right. is so important in especially in schools now love it curtis what about you uh my advice would be don't expect to be perfect make mistakes okay. and mm. I, I can remember my first year um closing the door and hoping nobody comes into this room to to <laughs> see that i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> right. at all. and I, there's still a lot of days where i feel that way you know 25 years later to just make the mistakes um, learn from them mm -hmm. and understand that every one of us, um, has been there and, and, um, yeah, it's, it's a learning process. It's education. You, you have to come into it as a learner and yeah. a learner, a learner grows uh, through you, the process. You know, it's interesting, you know, as I'm listening to you and thinking about this advice is that the, the difference between probably your first year and now versus, you know, mine too, and I'm sure Lorna's, mm -hmm. is not that we weren't making mistakes. It's that we've become comfortable with that. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's kind of an interesting aspect to think about. Like, because a lot of people think, you know, oh, you're like 20 plus years into education. You probably like know what you're doing. It's like, no, there's times I'm trying to figure stuff out but I'm comfortable with that because that is part of the process. Right. Absolutely. Whereas in your first year, you're like terror. You want to do everything perfect. And you're, you know, that, that apprehension of that, you know, probably sometimes, I think sometimes when we're nervous about making mistakes, then we tend to make more. 
right? Yeah, As opposed absolutely. to saying, hey, this is part of the process. We're asking kids to try new things, you know, go through that risk and failure. So why can't we do that? And you just become more, you, you know, it, it's kind of like the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know, right? That's absolutely. Kind of like and I think what you're pointing to there too is, you know, just the power of reflective practice mm -hmm. to be able to walk away and say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to shift this one thing and do that just a little bit different that didn't go so well so how can i shift that yeah. up for the next time you know what's awesome is that you said reflective practice and i'm like you know what i'm gonna blog about this so there you go so now it's gonna be you know in the brain forever so i listen it was awesome that you know having you on the podcast i'm excited to talk more about your book uh collaborative response uh you can check it out in the link below uh, but lauren curtis great to sit down and chat with you and uh thanks for being on thanks for the shout outs and uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. There we go. There we go. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody.